Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. We're still working in 2.7. This is part two, adding and subtracting fractions. Now, in the previous uh, lecture video, we looked at fractions that had the same denominator. But in many cases, we're going to have different denominators. In this example, we have 6 and 4. Their denominators are different. Well, the tool we're going to use is called the least common denominator. And if you recall from a previous video, we talked about least common multiples. It's the same tool, but now we're just going to find an application for it. So let's say we want to have 5 6 and 1 4. So in order to add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same denominator. So our methods to get that same denominator or find the LCD, the least common denominator, the first thing we want to do is look at the numbers, look at the larger of the two numbers, and determine if this is a multiple of this number. Well, I can't multiply a whole number times 4 to get 6. So in this example, we checked for multiples. It didn't have any multiples. The next one is prime factorization. And we've re reviewed this before. So prime factorization, I look at 6, and I know that 6 is 2 times 3. And 4 is 2 times 2. And if we recall when we did least common multiples, we said, OK, what are our unique factors? Well, 3 is a unique factor. And what are not unique factors? The ones that occur in both. And what is, which one has the most? Well, this has two factors of 2. So I'd say 2 squared if we were writing it like that. So 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. So I find. 12 is my LCD, least common denominator of these two fractions. Now, one way to check it, and you should always check it, is to say, is this number, my LCD, evenly divisible by both denominators? If so, I know I have a common denominator. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we can see, yes, this is divisible by both of my denominators. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go over here, and we'll take a look at finding the LCD of some fractions. So the first one here, I, look at, I test these to see if they're multiples. There is no whole number I can multiply by 12 to get 20. So I'm going to use prime factorization. I'm just going to write their primes here. I know 12 is 4 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2. So 2 squared times 3. 20 is 2 squared times 5, or 4 times 5. 4 is 2 squared. 2 squared times 5. Now, I look at this and say, well, my unique factors, this one has a 5 and this one has a 3. So my LCD must have a 5 and a 3. And then they both have 2 squared. So if I were to multiply these back out, I have 5 times 3 is 15. 2 squared is 4. 15 times 4 is 60. Is this number evenly divisible by 20? Yes, it is. Is this number evenly divisible by 12? Yes, it is. And one way you'll see it is, how many times is this divisible by 20? The missing factor it has. 3 times 20 is 60. Here, 12 times the missing factor of 5 is 60. So you see that missing factor. This one here, we're going to look at this and say, well, is 12 and 24 multiples? Hey, 24 is twice 12. So I know that these have that multiple. Well, how many times would I have to multiply 12 to make it 24? I've already identified that the LCD is 24, because 24 is evenly divisible by 12. It's just missing that multiple of 2. Well, this contains all the multiples of 12 plus one more. So the LCD is 24. If you can recognize that these are multiples, you're there. You found the LCD. All right, what about this one here? We have negative 1 9th and negative 80 over b. Well, 9 and b have no common factors, because we don't know what b is. We have to treat it as a prime value, or a prime number, excuse me. So if we look at these, well, this is a case where the LCD is going to be the multiple of the 2, because we don't know what b is. So our LCD would be 9b. 
All right, this example here, 45 over 24 and 2 over 45, I want you to try this one for yourself. Factor this down, because maybe we recognize that these are not multiples. And construct the LCD. Find that value. OK, we're going to move over here. And now we're going to get into the meat of it. When we need to add or subtract fractions, well, we have to change those denominators to be the same. In order to change a fraction, we can write it as what's called an equivalent fraction. So let's say I have 2 sevenths. And I want to write it with a denominator of 28. Well, if we look at 2 sevenths, what would I have to multiply by 7 to make it 28? Well, to multiply 7 by a number to get 28, that number would have to be 4. 7 times 4 is 28. But we can't change the value of our fraction. It has to remain equivalent. So what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And we can see 4 over 4, well, I'm only multiplying by 1, essentially. And that's a fancy 1, right? 1 times this number doesn't change the number. But when we do this, 2 times 4, we get 8. 7 times 4 is 28. So 8 28 is the same thing as 2 7 They are equivalent fractions. So by using this tool, now we can add or subtract fractions that have unlike denominators by writing equivalent fractions. So we're going to move over here and take a look and say, OK, I have 5 6 and I want to add 2 9 Well, they don't have the same denominator. So when we add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to factor this. This is 2 times 3. And 9 is 3 squared, or 3 times 3. And I can say, OK, well, this is a unique factor. So my LCD has to contain a 2. And then we have 3's in both of them, but this one has 2. So my LCD has to have 2. And if I multiply these all together, I have 2 times 3 squared, well, which is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. My denominators have to be. 18. That's my goal. I've determined what the least common denominator should be. Now I have to change these by using equivalent fractions. What times 6 would give me 18? Well, it's that missing factor of 3. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I have 5 times 3 is 15. And of course, 6 times 3 is that 18 that I was looking for. Now we go to this fraction. We're going to write an equivalent fraction here. What do I have to multiply by 9 to get 18? Well, that missing factor over here was a 2, that right there. So 2 times 9. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm multiplying by 1. 2 times 2 is 4. And of course, the 9 times 2 is the 18. Now that they have a common denominator, I can write the sum of these two fractions. 15 18 plus 4 18 is a total of 19 18 All right, let's look at the next example. We have 7 12 minus 11 20 as well as subtraction, but we do the exact same thing we did with addition. So I'm going to factor this down. This is 4 times 3, which is 2 squared times 3. This is 4 times 5 which is 2 squared times 5. And now I can write the LCD. I can say, well, they both have a 2 squared, and they both have, or well, only one has a 3, and only one has a 5. So the 5 and 3 are unique, but the 2 squared is common to both. So now I can multiply these together. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 squared is 4. 15 times 4 is 60. So my goal is to write these with a denominator of 60. What do I have to multiply by 12 to make it 60? Well, it's that missing factor of 5. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top, just like we did in the previous example. 7 times 5 is 35. And 5 times 12 is 60. 11 20 is, well, I've got to have that 60. I have to multiply this by 3. 3 times 20 is 60. It's that missing factor, that unique factor over here. So I multiply by 3 over 3, that fancy term, way of 1, right? 3 times 11 is 
33. And of course, 3 times 20 is 60. 35 minus 33 is 2 60 is Now, one thing we always have to do, reduce our fractions. Always check 2 and 60 have a common factor of 2. So I can factor out a 2 to get 1 30th. 1 30th is the answer of 7 12ths minus 11 20th. Now, the reason why I didn't check to see if this reduced is because I recognize 19 as a prime number. And we've covered prime numbers in a previous section. All right, what if we have more than just two fractions that we're going to add or subtract? Well, we have to consider all the denominators. So 3 is already a prime number. It's factored down. 4 is 2 squared. And 6 is 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. 2 squared is 4 and 3. So let's look at our factors to find our LCD. Our LCD, well, I have two factors of 2 and one factor of 3. And 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Now, because I have more than two fractions, I'm just going to check my work as I go. Is 12 divisible by 6? Yes, twice. Is 12 divisible by 4? Yes. 3 times. Is 12 divisible by 3? Yes, it is 4 times. So this is a common denominator. And it's the least common denominator because we use the prime factors. So now to add these together, I have to change this to a denominator of 12. So all of them have to have a denominator of 12. So what times 3 is 12? Well, we already determined 4. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times 4 is 8. What do I have to do to 4 to make it 12? I multiply it by 3. What I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. What do I have to do to 6 to make it 12? I've got to multiply it by 2. And 2 over 2 is that fancy way of 1. 5 times 2 is 10. And now I can go ahead and find the sum or difference of these fractions. And I'm just going to work left to right. 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 10 is a positive 9. We get 9 twelfths. And now I want to reduce that, because I recognize 9 and 12 are both divisible by 3. I know 9 has a factor of 3, and I know 12 has a factor of 3, because I found that LCD using a factor of 3. So if I take that out, I get 3 fourths. 3 fourths is the solution to this sum. All right, <clears throat> moving on to this one, I want you to try to do this one on your own at this time. So take that opportunity, factor it down, find that least common denominator, and then find their sum or difference. <clears throat> 